Be bold, be strong, love loud, be triumphant. Be bold, be strong, love loud, be triumphant.
so grateful that you care. I'm so grateful that you care. It's a cross. You didn't have to do it. Cross you did not have to do it. Oh God, but I'm thankful, yeah. But I'm thankful that you did. The cross you did not have to do it. Cross you did not have to do it. Oh God, but I'm thankful. But I'm thankful that you did. So we say. thankful worship this morning. He didn't have to do it, but we are thankful. We are grateful. We offer you a grateful worship, oh God. We are thankful that you did, Jesus. Hallelujah. And as we lift our hands, oh God, we stand and proclaim that there is no greater name than the name of Jesus. Do we agree this morning? Are we ready to stand and proclaim the name of Jesus? Hallelujah. We believe and we understand that there is no greater name than the name of Jesus. We love you, Lord. We honor you and we lift you up, Jesus. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord Jesus. No greater name than 
Somebody needs to testify or to encourage themselves this morning. That name. Just remind yourself. And believe it if you may have a little doubt. We're going to declare it out of our mouths. Can we sing it out again? That name heals all. That name. No matter what we see. No matter what we hear, we know, we believe. That name, that name, that name heals all. That name delivers all. It works, it works, it works.
things to start declaring in their lives right now. Hallelujah. 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 Whatever you have to declare this morning, declare it because we know it works. Hallelujah. 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 We believe it works. We know that it will work out for your good. We believe and we declare that it works. We know it works. We know it works. What a wonderful name. What a powerful name. What a solid name. For on Christ the solid rock, you are standing this morning. On Christ the solid rock, you are standing on this morning. We know it works. We know it works. We know it works. Hallelujah. Delivers all, it works, it works, that day heals all, that day delivers all, yes it works, it works, it works, it works, it works, that name heals all. and proclaim Jesus one more time stand and proclaim stand and proclaim oh, there is no other name There's no greater name Jesus 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 Jesus, 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 about the name Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Amen. Would you wave your hands and just lift your hands? Magnify him this morning. Jesus, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. There's something about that name. Something about the name Jesus. There's something. Sweetest name I know. Amen. The sweetest name I know. Book of Acts, chapter 4, verse 12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other, but there is none other name under heaven given among men there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved hallelujah not Buddha not Selassie not Confucius, not Daddy Grace, not Father Divine. There's only one name. And there was only, there is only one name. Hallelujah. And that name is Jesus. Someone say Jesus. Someone say Jesus. Someone say Jesus. Someone say, Jesus. Jesus. There's healing in the name of. There's deliverance in the name of. There is breakthrough in the name of. There is glory in the name of. Hallelujah. Someone shout, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One man was sitting by the wayside. He was blind. Could not see. But he heard, he just heard, he just heard, he just heard that this name was passing by. And he needed something. He needed something. And he heard that Jesus was passing by. And because he knew what was in the name Jesus, he had a revelation of what was in the name Jesus. When he heard that Jesus was passing by, he began to cry out with all his might and all his power because he needed a change in his situation. He needed a breakthrough. He needed deliverance. So he began to call out, Jesus! Jesus! Thou son of David, Jesus, hallelujah, Jesus, we need you, have mercy. And they told him to keep quiet, they tried to shut him up, they tried to, you know, cow him down, but the more they tried to quiet him is the louder he cried. I wonder if there's someone that needs something from the Lord today. I just want to let you know that Jesus is passing this way today. Hallelujah. And all you have to do is call on the name of Jesus. If you need him, just call him today. If you need him, just call him today. What's his name? What's his name? What's his name? Come on, someone shout Jesus. Shout Jesus! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is here. Hallelujah. He is here. Amen. He's here. You can touch him. 
Hallelujah. You'll never, 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 never. I don't know what you need today, but I want to let you know that Jesus, Jesus is passing this way. Jesus is passing this way. Jesus is passing this way. Whatever you need, don't miss out. Don't miss out because of the crowd. Jesus is passing this way. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We're grateful to be in the house of the Lord today and to be in the presence of Jesus. And that's why we're here this morning because we're in the presence of Jesus. Amen. In, in growing up and, 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 and um, going to school and so on and so forth, there were so many different names, different names, and you had especially to ascribe yourself to a certain name to get recognition. Names like Tommy Hilfiger, names like Nike, names like Nautica. Anybody remember Nautica? All right. E even for a couple years, there was a, a pair of jeans called Parasuco. You got to have a pair of para. I know, I know some of you. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Some of you got this before. Uh, Parasuco jeans and guest jeans, especially the five, the carpenter five pocket jeans that you, you look like a carpenter even if you never lifted up a nail in your life. There were certain names that you had to ascribe and have to put on in order to get certain recognition. Now, nowadays, I don't know, it's worse. I, I don't even know where, where kids find the money to buy these clothes. Names that existed since the 70s and the 80s, and you would, you would never even dream of asking your parents to buy you that. Names like Dior. People going to school in Dior and Fendi and, and Gucci and, and uh, all the other names. And you know, the thing about all these names is you, you, you put so much effort into purchasing them so that you can wear them. Forget about the sneakers. You, you, you can make a down payment on a vehicle with some of these sneakers, the price of the sneakers today. You know how much a pair of Yeezys cost? Who said yeah? I beg your pardon, all right. I didn't even know. And, and, and I'm not knocking any of that. If God bless you to be able to purchase that. But many of us have had to find our identity in these names. And it, it came to the point where I realized even the people that were wearing all the Tommy Hilfiger, all the Polo Ralph Lauren. Ralph Lauren even had a brand called Chaps. It, 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 all of those names, all of these people still had issues. And they put so much effort and money into purchasing these names. And I, I realize as an adult now, so many of us were so insecure. So many of us were so broken. So many of us were so lost, yet we still had the names. But I want to let you know that there is a name that you can sow into. Amen. There's a name that you can give into. Hallelujah. And I want to let you know that you can find security. Not by giving into the name, but by submitting to the name. That's why the writer said, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it. Uh, I'm not running into Tommy Hilfiger. I'm not running into Fendi. But I'm running into the name of the Lord. Whereby we are saved. Amen. We're going to give to that name today. We're going to give to that name. We, we spend so much. There's so many different names. PSENG, National Grid, Con Edison, uh, Opera, you, you, you name it. All these, the, the fuel oil company, the gas company. Some people, I, don't, I only buy from BP. I only buy from Exxon. Because there is a, Lord have mercy, there is a brand that we have developed a loyalty to. Uh, hallelujah. But I want you to develop a loyalty to the brand of Jesus. Uh, that is the name brand whose loyalty pays off in the end. Amen. Let's give in the house. If you have your offering, would you stand with me? 
Let's give in the house. Amen. Amen. When the children of God were beginning to build, they said they wanted to do three things. Uh, they wanted to go as high as they can. They wanted to go as high as they can. And the Bible also says they wanted to make a name for themselves. Today, we're not looking to make a name for ourselves. There is a name that has already been given under heaven whereby we can be saved. If you have your offering, stand with me. Amen. And we're going to do our declaration. We can give through Giveify, PayPal, ttcog.com. And in our declaration goes as follows. As I move. As I move. As I move. As I move. All right, you're supposed to know it by heart. So I'm just giving you the boost and then you, you follow through. All right. As I move. As I move towards a triumphant life, I accept every supernatural I so triumphant, I reach triumphantly, I give triumphantly, I live triumphantly. Amen. Let's give in the house. God bless you.
just need everybody now just to rock. Other side now. One more time, rock. And everywhere I go, you lead the way. You're my rock of salvation. Everywhere. And everywhere I go, you lead the way. Last time. You're my rock of everywhere. salvation. Last time, everywhere. Last time, everywhere. And everywhere I go, you lead the way. You're, You're my, my rock of salvation. salvation. Hallelujah. Every rock may rock upon Jesus. That name is so sweet. Every rock may rock upon Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus' name so sweet. Emmanuel name so sweet. Jesus' name so sweet. Emmanuel name so sweet. Rock. You're not, whoa, 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 pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up. When we get to the rock part, you have to rock. We just practice rocking. When we get to the rock part, all right, we have to rock. Everybody ready? One, two, three. Jesus name so sweet, Emmanuel name. sweet hallelujah hallelujah you can rock you can do a sanctified rock <laughs> father we thank you for this offering we give you praise and we give you glory and we give you honor lord thank you for the opportunity to give in your house willingly generously amen and to your glory we give you praise in jesus name amen 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 we don't have to wait till convention to enjoy the presence of God. Amen. Hey, Lord have mercy. How was so quiet this morning? Amen. Every rock. Oh, hallelujah. Isn't his name sweet? Isn't his name sweet? Amen. We're going to get ready. Amen. The word is about to go forth. Amen. But I want to just congratulate and appreciate and thank everyone that helped to make yesterday's Thanksgiving dinner what it was. You ought to give yourself a round of applause. That's how you applause yourself? Come on, love yourself, man. Applause yourself. Whoa. Come on, put your hands together for you and the job that you did in our Thanksgiving dinner yesterday. Amen, amen. And we want to thank, amen, everyone that contributed everyone that helped to cook, everyone that seasoned, everyone that picked up somebody or what have you or delivered some food, whatever role that you played, amen, you did it well. And we thank God for you this afternoon. 
Amen. And I want to give a special amen. Thank you on behalf of everyone here to our sister Richardson. Amen. Amen. I don't know what she's saying. I can't read her lips. But we ought to, yeah, come on, you ought to get, stand up on your feet and give her a round of applause. Amen. Amen. All right, God, but, oh, you want to, oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely. We know, we know it's a team, but listen, a coach can take a team to a certain amount of wins. And another coach can step in and take that same team to another level of wins. So yes, it's a team effort, but amen, we appreciate the galvanizing force that Sister Richardson is in making this thing possible. And that is not a slight to anybody else that helped and labored and participated. Amen. We have people, see, if I can't even, if I start calling names, it's going to be a problem. So I'm going to make a list of everybody, and I'm going to call everybody's name individually. But not today. Amen. But not today. Amen. So in the spirit of Thanksgiving, this Wednesday, we're going to be in-house at 730 for a Thanksgiving celebration. This went, not 7.30 a.m., 7.30 p.m. Amen. So we're going to be here, amen, in celebration as a pre-Thanksgiving service. Is that all right? All right. And we're going to be in-house. Wow. Oh, I, I know you worked really hard yesterday. I know that's what it is. Amen. But anyway, we thank God and we're looking forward to that service. And, and expecting a, a blessing in that service. Amen. I want to uh, say a special thank you to the praise and worship team. Isn't this an awesome worship team? Amen. Amen. The triumphant worship team is really triumphant. Amen. And we want to continue to pray for them and ask God to, to bless them and increase them in stature and in wisdom. Amen. Because you need wisdom and skill amen, to function in this capacity. So we thank God for them and our musicians, of course. We want to thank God for them. Amen, amen. I, I, I know we say things like, you don't need an organ to praise the Lord. And, you know, we used to worship with just tambourines and knocking things. But listen, you, you need music. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I can, I can show you in the Bible how important music is to ministry. Amen. So we want to thank God for our musicians. Amen. Amen. In the, in the spirit of thanksgiving, we want to thank God for our leadership in this house. Amen. Would you stand to your feet for the pastoral team led by our Bishop Eric McLeod. Amen. His other half, First Lady McLeod, God bless you. Amen. Pastor Watson, Pastor Clinton Richards and Evangelist Richards. Pastor David, amen. We are Put your hands together now. Come on, come on now. Put your hands together. Put your hands together. Amen, amen, amen. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Well, it's, it's time for the word, and the preacher is about to come forth. Amen. And that is uh, none other than myself. So uh, I crave your prayers this morning. I'm going to ask you at this moment, let's just, uh, if you could just breathe a word of prayer, amen, before we even begin, amen. Would you do that? Would you do that? Why don't we just pray for a moment? Let's pray for the word as it's about to go forth. Would you stand to your feet? Let us bow our heads. Amen, amen. Sister Smith, would you come and pray for the preacher this morning, Sister Smith? Hallelujah. God and our Father, we give you thanks, we give you praise, we adore you, we lift you up, oh God, and we magnify your name. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for this privilege, this opportunity, Lord, to stand in your presence. Father, you as your servant is about, oh God, to minister your word to your people. We pray in the name of Jesus that, oh God, our heart will be pliable. 
pray today, God, that good ground will be here. Oh, God, so when the word go forth, it will fall on good ground. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And it will bring forth hundredfold in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Touch, oh, God, the servant, oh, God. You said those that turn man to righteousness is like the star of heaven. Hallelujah. So I pray today, God, as the word go forth from his mouth, I pray you anoint him, God, and he will speak, oh God, as you gave him utterance in the name of Jesus. Bless us today, oh God. Oh God, we are committing everything into your hands right now. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank amen. You, Let Jesus. the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Turn your Bibles with me. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. I want to thank Sister Smith for that prayer this afternoon. Amen. Bless the Lord. And uh, it's Ephesians chapter 3, I'm sorry. So just turn your page back one. Verse 14, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14, for this cause, uh, let me give you a chance to get it, if you're in Genesis, you're a little distance away, if you're in Matthew, you're not too far, just keep turning. And if you reach Romans, just make a right turn and you're, you're almost there. Amen. Amen. Chapter 3, verse 14, and we re read it very quickly. For this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And I, if you could just underscore verse 15, which says, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Amen. Thank God. The word of God is already blessed and we honor it by saying amen this afternoon. Let the church say amen. Amen. And I, I, I'll say that we won't be very long this afternoon. I know the turkey hasn't started thawing yet, but uh, we will be a little bit short this afternoon uh, for wisdom's sake. Uh, but I, I really want to just talk to us about a very, very important subject. I don't really intend to preach as much as just talk to us on a very important subject uh, that sometimes we may overlook in the kingdom. And uh, if you could just turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor, it's a family affair. Amen. It's a family of fear. Uh, the subject of family is a very primary topic among everything that inspires and teaches us uh, that we can think of. 
In fact, some of the greatest uh, entertainment features that we know are centered around family. How many, how many people recognize this? It's a rare condition in this day and age to read any good news. Where's Brother Winchell? On the good news. On the newspaper page, you, nobody recognize that. Okay, that's that's family mem matters, and it had to do. If those of you who remember uh, Steve Urkel, right? It was always a, a thing. We I love YPE, but I know I was sacrificing TGIF. <laughs> um, there was a. Uh, like the way Glenn Miller plays. Uh, there you go, Pastor Watson. Songs that, right? All in the family. Uh, we talk about... Um, uh, do, 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 do. Yes, someone recognize it. Can I, can I get somebody to talk back to me this afternoon? The Cosby Show. The, Cos, the Cosby Show. Um, we, we, we have these kind of things that are represented in the arts. And they're so poignant for us because they're centered around family. And family is so powerful, amen, because it touches every one of us in some shape or form, amen. And I, I just love to see especially shows that promote even the black families. But I, I love these, sh these shows and, and they kind of stick out in my mind especially because of the relationship that is, is seen among the families and what is portrayed. Amen. And, and, and almost every good show is centered around a family in some shape or form. Uh, if, 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 if we look at it, we can even think of quasi-families and, and pseudo-families. You know, shows like, we are living single in a 90s kind of, oh, I'm sorry, wrong congregation. Okay, that's, that's it. Pastor, Pastor, Bishop McLeod got it. Amen. So anyway, even if it's not uh, immediate family, there is some sort of camaraderie or family aspect. Uh, popular shows even like Friends, which I didn't watch much of because it was a ripoff of Living Single. And, you know, they, they got uh, the clout, but it was really Living Single for our Caucasoid brothers. But that's a different story altogether. So anyway, these things, uh, when we look at them, we realize um, how important family is uh, to our very being. And, and, and family is something that starts in heaven. Hello? Family is, is, is not a man-made thing. It is a God-made thing. Jesus said, I and the Father are one. There was a family in heaven first that, that set the trademark, that, that, that set the benchmark uh, for, for what family is supposed to be like, how people are supposed to live together, how they're supposed to operate together, how they're supposed to move as one in harmony. We are family. Uh, and, 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 there's, and, and we're living in a time where there are so many family matters. And I, 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 we're knocking on the door of Thanksgiving, a time where families should come together and enjoy a meal together and 
For some of us, it is a time of joy and excitement. But if some of us are honest, we are praying and fasting, not because we want to make room for the turkey, but we are praying and fasting to deal with family. Lord, I hear a rat licking ice in this place. Because one of the things the devil wants to do is destroy and decimate families. Because families are a representation of the kingdom of God. Hello? When God created Adam, he said, it is not good for man to be alone. I want something that represents what I've got going on up here in heaven. So I am going to take out of Adam a rib. And now I'm going to create Eve. And the Bible says that he should leave and cleave. And the Bible says that the two shall become one. That is family. And from that very moment going forward, the devil has made it his point of duty to pull families apart. Oh, hallelujah. He has created his diabolical scheme to pull every family and decimate every family. I want us to understand this afternoon, and I'm, I'm coming down very quick. I want us to understand this afternoon the, the warfare that the family is engaged in. We see in the word of God that the first, first, first murder that took place was a killing between two brothers. Uh, because the family unit was too powerful. The family unit was God's assignment in the earth to make certain things take place, to expand his kingdom here on earth. And he knew that if the family was together, if the family could come together and make things work, that his kingdom would be decimated. And so now the devil does everything that he can to now drive a wedge into families. Are you with me? Are you with me? Oh, hallelujah. So we can look alike and we can come from the same loins and come from the same people, uh, but something is different between the two of us. And the difference that is between the two of us becomes more of a God to us than who God is. And that difference, we can no longer get past the differences. We have what is called, quote unquote, irreconcilable differences. And these irreconcilable differences pull us apart. Hello, somebody. When, 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 can, can, let's, let's, let's look at the Bible here. When the, when, when, when the word of God came to, T, to, to Abraham, the Bible says that Abraham and his family moved out of Ur. Are you, are you following me? Because he called Abraham, but it was a package deal. It was a family assignment. Because God knew that it wasn't just Abraham alone. God knew that if he called Abraham, he was moving, he was uprooting an entire family. And, 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 and families, I want you to understand that each family in the kingdom has an assignment. Every family in the kingdom was created for a purpose. Every father is a father for a reason. Every mother is a mother for a reason. Oh God, every son is a son for a reason. And, and, and when we look at this, we, we, we can look at what happened with brother Jacob. It, the Bible says that Jacob was on the run. But Jacob was not alone. Jacob had his entire 
family with him. Because Jacob had a family assignment. Are you there? Jacob's family had an assignment. When we look even at what takes place with Jacob's sons, we understand that these men became the forefathers of the children of Israel who were called by God for a purpose. And even right there in the book of Genesis, you can look at chapter 27 and 28, we can see that the family can get fractured and fragmented. Are you there? And if we are not careful, the same thing can happen to us. The Bible says that we are to lean not unto our own understanding. And there will be a, 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 a good enough reason, good enough reason to, for families to fall apart. Things happen. And the reason why families are so important or families are, can do the most because family is the one that is closest to you. In Bible study, one thing we said was that it, it, is, it is those that are closest to you that can hurt you the most. You don't like how I'm talking. It, it is, oh Lord, it is, it, 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 it's, it's one thing when you have a friend, an associate, or someone of that nature. But family, there's something about if a family disappoints you. Because we have the same blood. We came up in the same space a lot of the times. We probably slept in the same beds. We ate the same food. We went through some of the same struggles. We went through some of the same pain together. Uh, and we saw each other from afar and, and we saw each other up close and we have intimate knowledge of each other and therefore pastor richards i have an understanding more than anyone else of what's going to hurt you what is going to press your button bishop mcleod what is going to trigger you so therefore when i press that button when i pull that trigger Ah, it stings just a little bit more. David said, if it were my enemies, Lord have mercy. Hallelujah. Because the, every one of us has had some enemy experiences. But there's something about when we are hurt and when we are broken by those that know us personally that know us closely, that have walked with us, that have supped with us, that have ate with us, oh hallelujah, that have taken communion with us, uh, that have washed our feet, uh, that saw us when we were lost and saw us. There's something that, that breaks the heart even more. No, nobody want to talk to me this afternoon. But the, the God that we serve allows it to be so sometimes. Because he knows that the family still has an assignment. Uh, and it's a family of fear. And I just want to remind someone this afternoon through the scripture that the God we serve has created us to be a part of something greater than ourselves. Because we cannot accomplish this thing on our own. We can, no man is an island. No man can do this by themselves. It is a family of fear. And God has called us to show the world how it's done. God has called us to show the world how it can work. That family still works. That family is still God's decision. That family is still God's assignment in the earth. Family. Uh, we say family. Amen. Uh, uh, someone say family. It's a family of fear. It's a family of fear. And, and when we look through the scripture, and, and, and I, I, won't, I won't prolong too much, but the Bible allows us to understand that the family was created for a number of things. Uh, and one of the things that family does, it creates us a sense of identity. Uh, the problem that we have today is many of us have no sense of identity. Well, hallelujah. Especially among our, our, our black folk. 
Because our Irish folk, our Italian folk, they can go years back to this great, great, great grandfather and that, that great, great grandfather. And many of us, it just stops, especially among us as black folk, it just stops at a certain point. Are, are you following me? We can go a couple parents back, but that's it. Because many of us, our families were taken from Africa years ago. If we don't have any structure in regards to following through our family line to know whose family we came from, what family we came from, what we, we don't have the, the luxury of knowing what clan or, or, or what, 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 what tribe or what have you. We don't have that luxury. And therefore, we see even today that there is sometimes a lack of identity that is lost until many people go back to Africa and go and witness for themselves where they may have come from. Uh, I, I, I heard Bishop T.D. Jake say that once he got to Nigeria, he did the, 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 the DNA testing to see where he was coming from, and once he got to Nigeria, there was a sense of being at home. There was a sense that he was, he was back at home. Oh, hallelujah. And, and, and I heard him, he, 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 and I'm not preaching his words, but he said something along the lines of he was, he was riding in a taxi that a Nigerian was driving. And he said, you know, I never cared too much for African people or Nigerian. I think that they're arrogant. I, I, I think they're kind of uh, this and that and this and that. And he said, the, 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 the cab driver said to him, listen, you know, maybe if you knew your history like the Africans are connected to their history. Maybe you too would have that same sense of confidence and purpose. And it changed, it changed his whole trajectory in life and his thinking, understanding where he was from because he now understood that there was a sense of identity, amen. The other thing now, it also gives us a sense of security. It gives us a sense of security. Uh, there's something about knowing that you are family, especially when family goes to school together. Amen. Because it doesn't matter what happens in school. As long as you and I are in school together, that means that, listen, if someone touches you, if someone messes with you, if someone picks on you, if someone tries to bully you, listen, I am here too. And all you have to do is come and check for your big brother or sometimes even your big sister because family is going to protect family. Oh, hallelujah. You ever been to school and there's a big family in the school? So it doesn't, and, and the God help the person that doesn't know that that guy is related to that guy and that girl and that girl. And he begin to pick on that girl. What happens is he begin, and, and all of a sudden he's at lunch one day eating his lunch. And you see all the family walking in together to, to, to settle the issue. Hallelujah. And cold sweat start to... <laughs> Because family gives you a sense of security. Are you there? Are you there? When Abraham had left, he left Lot in one place. Hallelujah. And Lot, all of a sudden, he got into a lot of problems over there. And, and he, be, he had a lot of issues. And it was Abraham, Lot's uncle, that came back with an army and fought for Lot all over again. I'm so glad that family will fight for you. Family will fight for you. Or should fight for you, I should say. Hallelujah. And you look at Abraham. Abraham has a crew of people. Lot, his nephew, has a crew of people. And they are both going together and growing together. And it, as, as they begin to grow together, they both get big. They both are getting big. But Lot has become so big that his crew begins to fight with his uncle's crew. His family is now fighting, and you, sometimes you have some Game of Thrones things going on where one family, one family member in the family is fighting against <laughs> another set of family members within the family. And Abraham, in his wisdom, said, you know what? I am going to take the land over here, the smaller place. Hallelujah. And Lot, you can have the greater place that you can graze in. Lord, have mercy. 
Hallelujah. And when we look at this scripture, we see, hallelujah, the wisdom that Abraham possessed, uh, that he says he's going to let Lot go. Hallelujah. Lot would not be who he was without Abraham. Lot would not reach where he was without Abraham. Lot would not have this big crew or this family and all this cattle unless he had followed Abraham and was with Abraham in the first place. Uh, hallelujah. And sometimes there are people in your life, especially... Lord have mercy. Family, hallelujah, that would not be where they were without the grace of God and a God allowing you to be used to help them. Hallelujah. And it's sometimes those same family members, hallelujah, that get too big for you. Uh oh. Hallelujah. And suddenly, hallelujah, you, you find yourself in a position where you've got to let Lot go. Someone say, let Lot go. Hallelujah. There are some times in your life, hallelujah, where you have got to let God go. You can't hold Lot hostage in your mind. You cannot hold Lot hostage in your heart. You cannot hold Lot hostage in any part of your spirit. Hallelujah. Because you cannot move forward until you let Lot go. Hallelujah. Many of us have some family members that are lots. Hallelujah. We have lots and lots of lots in our family sometimes. And I just come to encourage someone today. Hallelujah. Let Lot go. Hallelujah. Lot may have borrowed some money, but this Thanksgiving, let Lot go. Hallelujah. And not repay that money, but let Lot go go hallelujah lot may have said some things behind your back hallelujah that have messed with your mind but i come to let you know you ought to let lot go hallelujah lot may have said some have may have stolen some things from your property but let lot go there might have been some inheritances that you were expecting there might have been some land and some promises oh hallelujah that you were expecting but i want you in this season in this thanksgiving season to understand that god has greater for you God has more for you, hallelujah, but you cannot hold on to Lot and receive what God has for you, hallelujah. So I want somebody in the house to let Lot go, hallelujah, let Lot go out of your spirit, let Lot go out of your mind, let Lot go out of your heart, let, hallelujah, let Lot go. Someone say, it's a family of fear. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Because the same uncle, hallelujah, that Lot forsaken, hallelujah, was the same uncle that came back and saved him. Hallelujah, because God has a greater plan for the family. Hallelujah, but Abraham could never be in a position, hallelujah, that he was in if he did not let Lot go. Some of us are fighting some things that we need to let go. Lord have mercy. I can hear a rat licking ice in this place. Hallelujah. We have to let Lot go. Families, families, it's a family of fear. It's a family of fear. Now, I, I, I want to I submit to you this afternoon that the body of Christ is God's idea, not man's idea. And the body of Christ has to be one. One family. Hello? We must be one, 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 one family. I, I know I sound like a oneness preacher, but Lord, there's only one way to God. And that is through Jesus. God is the God of oneness. He is a holy God. And that holiness means he has, it's, it's oneness. It, 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 there's no separation in him. He is who he says he is. He's not one way today and another way tomorrow. He is the one way all the way. He is God. He is holy. He is different. Hallelujah. In Romans chapter 8, verse 15, turn your Bibles to that real quickly. The Bible says, 
For we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Ah, uh, there is some bondage that keeps us hostage. But the Bible says ye have received the spirit of adoption. The reason that the spirit of adoption exists is because families have been broken. Because what was God's intention for family has been warped and twisted. Uh, nowadays, you are hearing that two men can be a family with children. Two, oh, Lord have mercy. Two women can be a family with children. And, and, and there's all sorts of other things going on to warp and twist the family assignment. But the Bible says that many of us, hallelujah, even in traditional and normal, what I will call them normal families, hallelujah, have lost out in the way. But the Bible says that now there is a place in God uh, where you are now adopted in by the Spirit. Hallelujah. And that is why when we come to church, Pastor Richards, hallelujah, we are now brothers. We are now brethren. This is why we say brother so-and-so and, and sister so-and-so. Because now we are brethren. We have received the spirit of adoption. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Many of us have lost our parents, have lost our mothers, uh, and lost our fathers. Uh, hallelujah. But we came into the kingdom of God. Uh, hallelujah. And we've got multiple fathers. Uh, we've got multiple mothers. Uh, hallelujah. Only because we have received the spirit of adoption. Many of us did not grow with a father, but we came into the kingdom and we saw men, uh, oh, hallelujah, of God. Oh, that rep represented what a father should be, that conducted themselves a certain way, that served God a certain way, and gave us the example that was necessary so that we too could become great fathers. Uh, hallelujah. The same thing with women. That is why the Bible talks about women teaching uh, the young ladies how to conduct themselves. Hallelujah. And although we are not in the times of Timothy and Titus, the spirit of the letter remains the same. There has to be a teaching a transference that takes place in order for the kingdom to be what it ought to be. Hallelujah. There's many of us that learned some things, even, even, even yesterday, maybe we saw somebody do something while they were cooking that gave you an idea that said, maybe I can do this this way. I can become a better cook. Maybe because some of us were around Pastor Richards or were around Deacon Brown or around Deacon Thompson, we catch a few things so that when we have our own we know exactly how to manage it hallelujah that is what the kingdom is all about we are family someone say it is a family of fear it is a family of fear hallelujah hallelujah and i want to i want to share this share this very quickly with you this very thought that joseph he was he was fragmented from his family for quite some time hallelujah because his very own brothers took him and put him in the pit, basically kidnapped him from themselves, <laughs> hallelujah, and buried Joseph in the pit and left him in the pit, and they said, no, we can't leave him here. Their very own brother, because of the favor that his father showed him, they threw him into the pit, and when they threw him into the pit, they said, we can't leave him here. Reuben cried out and said, no, this cannot work, and he took him out, and then after that, they sold them. Oh, Lord, they sold Joseph, hallelujah, to the, and he ended up in Egypt, and he ended up serving in Egypt, and the very same brothers that sold him, hallelujah, entered into a famine, and when they entered into this famine, many of you know this, when they entered into this famine, they said, we need to find some food, and they went all all the way to Egypt to get some food. And when they got to Egypt, they asked for some food. And long story short, uh, the same brother that they let go, the same brother that they kidnapped from themselves uh, was the same brother that they were asking for food. Hallelujah. The same family that had forsaken Joseph uh, was the same family that came back to Joseph uh, and asked him for some help, not even knowing uh, that it was the same brother who said that you guys at some point are going to bow to me. Hallelujah. As the stars, oh, hallelujah, bow before. And, and as they were there, and, they, and, and the same thing came to fruition. They bowed before Joseph, uh, asking him for food. Hallelujah. I want to let you know 
in this moment, uh, if Joseph had not let his brothers go, uh, if he remained bitter, if he remained angry, if he remained in that place, uh, when he got to the place where he could bless his very own brethren, uh, he would have missed the opportunity. It was a kingdom opportunity uh, to bless his own brethren. Uh, hallelujah. Maybe they would have died out in the famine uh, because there was nothing to eat. Uh, hallelujah. But these same brothers came back uh, and because Joseph, hallelujah, understood kingdom assignment uh, because he served in a kingdom, uh, he understood that God's kingdom must go forward. God's kingdom must continue. And these same brothers, uh, hallelujah, he had to let those brothers go, uh, hallelujah, so that he can lay hold on them again. Uh, hallelujah. And Joseph now was in the place uh, where he could bless them, uh, hallelujah. And he actually was at the place that when he blessed them, hallelujah, they realized that it was him, uh, hallelujah, right back around the dinner table again, uh, hallelujah, sitting down uh, and eating. And while he watched them, he said, listen, uh, I am your brother. Someone say, I am your brother. Hallelujah. I am your brother. I am your brother. I am your sister. Come on, someone say it. I am your brother. I am your sister, and we are in this thing together. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And it's about the family, hallelujah, of God. And when we see what happens, I want you to understand that David said, when my mother and my father forsake me, hallelujah, he will take, hallelujah, me up. Hallelujah. I want to let you know that God is getting ready to lift up some people that have been forsaken. God is getting ready to move some people, hallelujah, that have been thrown in the pit. God is ready to lift some people, hallelujah, that have been sold into slavery because you said we are no longer in bondage, no longer held captive, hallelujah, hallelujah, but we have received the spirit of adoption, hallelujah, hallelujah, and it was bigger than Joseph and his brothers. It was bigger than their little spat and their little thing. It was bigger than that. It was a family thing and because it was a family thing, uh, it was a kingdom thing. Hallelujah. Look at someone and say, I'm bigger than that. I'm bigger than that. Uh, I'm bigger than that. Uh, hallelujah. I will not be held hostage uh, by the hurt of yesterday. Uh, I will not help be held hostage uh, by what family has done to me. I will not be held, oh hallelujah, hostage uh, by what family has said about me. I will not be held in bondage uh, by what family has done to me. Uh, hallelujah. Because I choose choose a better way. I choose the way of God. And while I choose this way, as I go this way, God is going to allow me to be a blessing where I am. Hallelujah. Even if I'm outside, even if I'm the black sheep, I'm still going to be a blessing. And the same black sheep that was kicked out of the family became the same black sheep. Hallelujah. That God allowed his brothers, hallelujah, to, to feed his brothers. Hallelujah. The one, the one that the songwriter said, said the stone that the builder rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Jesus, hallelujah, was rejected. Jesus was pushed aside. Jesus became the black sheep. Jesus was rejected and despised of men. Jesus was thrown by the wayside. Hallelujah. Jesus was whipped. Hallelujah. 39 lashes. Jesus was pierced in the side. Hallelujah. Jesus was hung on the cross uh, and left to die, uh, lie, die under a curse. Uh, but the God that we serve allowed this very same Jesus uh, that is rejected to now become uh, the head cornerstone. Uh, oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, uh, for dying on the cross. Uh, thank you that you became the black sheep uh, so that I can be adopted. Uh, thank you that you became lost uh, so that I can be found. Uh, thank you, hallelujah, that you became poor so that I can become rich. Thank you, hallelujah, that you were wounded, hallelujah, so that I could be healed. For the Bible says, by his stripes, we are, oh, hallelujah, we are healed. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. They hung him high. They stretched him wide. Hallelujah, but my Jesus, hallelujah, he took it all for me. Hallelujah, there was one who was willing who to die in my stead. Oh, that a soul so unworthy might live uh, and the path to the cross uh, he was willing to tread. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Someone say they are nailed to the cross. They are nailed to the cross. Hallelujah. My big brother Jesus saw that I was getting picked on by the devil. Saw that I was getting picked on by demons. Saw that I was getting picked on by addiction. Saw that I was getting picked on by alcohol. Saw that I was getting picked on, hallelujah, by sin. Saw that I was getting picked on by the devil's plan. Hallelujah. But Jesus and the family of God, hallelujah, had a different plan for my life, hallelujah. So he came, hallelujah, where I was, I was weary and wounded and sad. But I found in him a resting place and he has made me, he has made me, he has made me. He has made me glad. Hallelujah. No more heartaches. No more sorrow. No more pain. Hallelujah. Because I found Jesus. Jesus has found me. Hallelujah. And everything that has happened before I am now adopted into the family. Hallelujah. And because I'm in the family, Lord have mercy. I get family benefits. I get family treatment. Hallelujah. I can walk in the fridge and open the fridge and take whatever it is that I want. Hallelujah. I can sleep in whatever bed that I want. I have two children and there's something about them. They don't ask if you can sleep in your bed. They don't care if they're salting up your business. They just decide that they want to sleep in your bed. Hallelujah. Because they have family rights and I'm so glad that I serve a God. Hallelujah. That has adopted me into the family. Hallelujah. I didn't deserve it. I wasn't supposed to be a part of it, but Jesus, hallelujah, but Jesus, but Jesus brought me into the family. Hallelujah, hallelujah, and now because I'm a part of the family, I get family inheritance. I get written into the will. Hallelujah, my report card goes on the refrigerator. Hallelujah, my good report goes goes on the refrigerator because the God that I serve uh, has adopted me into the family. Hallelujah. I don't know if there's anyone adopted in the house. Has anyone been adopted in the house? Oh, we were strangers uh, and aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. Uh, hallelujah. But he didn't just give me a green card. Lord, have mercy. Hallelujah. He did not just give me citizenship, uh, but he put me in the family. I'm so glad that I'm in the family. I've got family rights. The devil does not have any rights over my life. The devil does not have any rights to me or my children. The devil has no rights to my finances. The devil has no rights to my health. Hallelujah, because I'm a part of the family. Someone say it's a family of fear. It's a family of fear. It's a family of fear. Come on, someone say, it's a family of fear. It's a family of fear. So Jesus comes around the Thanksgiving table. Hallelujah. He comes to the Thanksgiving table. I don't know if they ate turkey in Israel. Uh, and he sits at the table with the family. And says, this is my body. This is my body. Which was broken for you. And the Bible says, he gave thanks. At the Thanksgiving table. And says, this is my body. Take, eat. You see, the first time the family was broken, 
It was when the devil, Evangelist Campbell, says to Eve, if you eat this, Sister Barley, if you eat this, you will. <laughs> so the devil knows how powerful food is. Don't play with people and their food. That's why we say you can't eat from everybody. Am I right, Sister Richardson? Right? So the, he, he, he says this to Eve. Eve says to Adam, take. This is good. And the family was broken. But when Jesus comes to the Thanksgiving table, he says, do this in remembrance. Do this because it is broken. But while it is broken, it is bringing the members. That's why we cannot form fool and say that we're taking Lord's Supper. We're sanctified and we're holy, but we are fragmented. Because the family of God sees Jesus broken so that we can be healed. So we now must reverse, partake in the reversal of the curse. We must partake in the reversal of the curse. And that is why Jesus now gives his body and says, take, eat. This is the good stuff. This is the real good stuff. Hallelujah. 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 It's time to get back to the table. Because at the table of grace, the cups never empty. The plate's always full. And, and let, let, me, let me tell you something else. At the table of grace, it is never, never too late. It's never too late. Because at the table of grace, the food never runs out. We, 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 we feed the community, but there comes a point where the food is finished. Thursday, at some point, especially if the food is really good, it's going to be finished. Oh, uh, but at the table of grace. Oh, hallelujah. Some of us like to go from one Thanksgiving table to the other. We eat some food, we jump in the vehicle and go somewhere else. And we go somewhere else. And we go somewhere else. And then you're constipated for a week. But... But seriously, <laughs> the, 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 when, when Jesus gave the wine, Evangelist Wilson, he gave the wine. He turned the water into wine. And they said, listen, the best wine, you know, was left for the last. So, that means the last food. <laughs> That's why we have to keep on feasting on <laughs> feasting on him because it gets better and better. Sweeter and sweeter. Are you with me? It's a family of fear. Stand with me. Somebody do me a favor and just...
can you move this table for me, please? Quick, 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 please. As, as we have listened to this this afternoon, God has designed you and me to be a part of the body, to be a part of the family of God. I, I, I love your spirit, Evangelist, Evangelist Richard. Amen. And that's, that's when you're a part of a family. You just want to see things get done. It doesn't matter who does it. It doesn't matter where. It, I just want to see it get done. Amen. And as we, 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 we talk about this, this scripture, it's a family of fear. God's kingdom is designated because of God's family. That's why we are a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Nation means that you come from one lineage, right? That's why God said to Abraham, you will be the father of many nations. Are you with me? Are you with me? Amen. At the table of grace, at the table of grace, you can partake in this gift that is Jesus Christ. I'm going to let go of everything because I'm a part of the family of God. And his blood is on my soul. His blood is on my soul. Blood in, blood out. His blood is on my soul. As we come this afternoon, I want you to stand in proxy for your family. I want you to stand in proxy for your extended family, your immediate family, because we are engaged in a warfare. This thing is warfare. Tear families apart. And, and you know, even the church, the devil would like to tear the church family apart. But we're coming to the table of grace. And we're standing in proxy for our families. Now you may be the one to lead your entire family to Christ. I always think about Pastor Watson and what I like to call the Rose Street Revival. And how many sisters came and gave their life to Christ. And what if maybe God is not done yet? Or what if in our families God wants to bring people to Christ through us? This Thanksgiving, I want you to remember you are a part of the family of Christ. And though you are part of your physical family, I want you to live as a representative of your spiritual family because you have received the spirit of adoption. And now you're new, brand new. This afternoon, those of you who would like to stand in proxy for your family, those of you who want to pray especially for your family, those of you who desire to see uh, your family saved, those of us who are struggling with family matters, family issues, family problems, Come on, we're going to pray this afternoon. Hallelujah. This afternoon, we're praying for this spiritual family. We're praying for this spiritual family. Holy Spirit. As we pray for this, 
our spiritual family. There are some things that we we are letting go this Thanksgiving season. This has been the fastest year of my life. I I I I, I remember January like it was yes. This has been the fastest year of my life. I don't know if it's because I'm getting older or I don't know if it's because I'm getting older or because um, it really is just going really fast. But this has been the fastest year of my life. We have no time to waste. And we're knocking on the door of January 2023. Whatever happened in our families in the 60s, whoever stole what, whatever happened in our families in the 70s, whoever said what, whatever happened in our church in the 80s, the 90s, the thousands, the 2022s, it's time to get kingdom minded and let something go. Are you hearing me? Deacon Brown, I love you. You said something to, to me that hurt me. But I'm letting it go. Evangelist Cleghorn, you don't know what you did to me. But I know. And I feel it. And every time I want to move forward. I remember that. Sister Lewin, I'm tired of carrying this. I'm letting it go. I'm letting it go. I'm letting it go. Even if you don't uh, ask me for forgiveness, I'm letting it go. Because what God has for me is greater than this. Greater than this. I refuse to stay here. I've been through too much not to worship him. I've been through too much not to worship him. I don't know what the future holds for me, but allow me to just drop this word. Allow me to just drop this word. I'm, I'm, I'm letting go. The Bible says if there's something between you and your brother, the sheep that you went to the butcher to buy and to kill and to make sure it was without blemish, the sacrifice that you had, that you bought, you took your time and your money to get it, to bring it into the house as your sacrifice. Oh, hallelujah. The Bible says that it doesn't matter how far you have traveled, you got to take that gift and leave it there. Go back and say, Sister Zena, so and so. Sister Zena, Evangelist Weathers, so and so. I, I got, I, I, I'm leaving it there. Because you cannot worship around. You cannot pray around it. You cannot fast around it. You cannot give offering around it. You cannot, I cannot dance around it. Thank you, Jesus. In my family, in, in my home, in my church. Oh, I want to represent the kingdom. This is a family of fear. This is a family of fear. Father, we stand in proxy this afternoon. We stand in proxy for our families. 
Lord, we want our families to come to you. We want to be a representative in our homes for you. Lord, we want to see revival in our homes and in our families. We want to see a difference, a change in our lives that affects those that are closest to us. Lord, we want to see our families saved. We want to see our families made new, our families made whole. But Lord, if we hold our brothers hostage, if we hold our aunties, our uncles, our nephews, our nieces, our sisters and our brothers hostage, how can we truly bless them? Lord, we're letting go, 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 letting go of our hurts and laying hold on you. The deep hurts that cause us to limp, that cause us to be triggered sometimes, that, that causes us to be angry at times, that causes us to fly off of the handle sometimes, that causes us to lose our footing. Father, we are letting them go. We're putting them before you, God. Revive us, God. We want to be free, not for a spirit of bondage, but for a spirit of adoption. Father, we look to you today. We put every family before you today. Every family that you have assigned and created for a purpose. Every family, we put them before you today, God. And ask you in the name of Jesus, have thine own way. Let your will be done. Let your kingdom come in every family as in our heavenly family. Let your kingdom come in our homes. And Father, let your kingdom come in our church. Father, we are letting go. We are letting go. We are letting go. Because Father, what you have for us is greater than anything that has happened in the past. Greater than anything that has happened yesterday. Greater than anything that even happened this morning. Father, oh God, we are letting go this afternoon. And God, we want to be made new. Hallelujah. Let your church be the church. Let our people rejoice. Because this afternoon, God, we have settled the question. And we've made our choice. Let the anthem ring out. Songs of victory swell. For your church triumphant. Is alive. Is alive. Is alive. Is alive. Your church triumphant is alive. It is well. We give you praise today. We give you glory today. Spirit of the living God. Spirit of the living God. Jesus, thou son of David. Have mercy, have mercy, Jesus, have mercy. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. Every chain is broken. Let every chain be broken. Every demonic disunity spirit be broken. In the name of Jesus. Every discord every malicious thought, every malicious feeling. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, forgive us of our debts as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lord, we may have done wrong, but we ask you forgive us today. Oh God, we're taking accountability. Accountability today, God. 
for where we have gone wrong. No more finger pointing, Jesus. But we take accountability today and we submit to you, God. And we believe on you this afternoon. Pray that you break every chain, every yoke in the name of Jesus. And we pray. Let the church sing. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bishop McLeod. Jesus. Come on, put your hands together. He received a word today. Oh, I did. I did. Hallelujah. Join me and lift your hand and say, thank you, Jesus, for the word. Oh, God, a spoken word has been delivered. A word came from home for the church, for the family. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Now put your hands together and stretch your hand across it. Oh, Pastor David Lindsay and say, Lord, bless him. Lord, bless him. And bless him indeed. Oh, God, cover him. Lord, and use him again. Thank you for using him. In Jesus' name. Come on, let's put our hands together. Just giving God thanks. Let me say thank you so much for coming today. Thank God for your presence. We are about to close the session now. We have um, all member, all ministers. We're going to ask you to stay back. We're going to meet for a few. I'm just going to ask you just please. We're going to go right into it. So God bless you. God holds spirit keep you. The Lord bless you. The Lord make his face shine up in you. The Lord cover you in all areas of your life. And as a matter of fact, I pray that God will so grant you peace and all prosperity in this season. Lord, go with your people. Go with them. Hallelujah. Furnish them with all that they need in such a time as this. Let your presence be with them. In the mighty and awesome name. Go with your people. I receive that in Jesus' name. Come on, you receive that. Holy Spirit is being with you. The covenant of God is with you. The blessing of God is covering over you. Hallelujah. No evil shall come nigh your dwelling. No plans of the enemy shall overtake you because God is covering you. God is watching over you. God is making you prosperous. So go in peace. Hallelujah. God bless you in Jesus' name. People. Be strong, love loud, be triumphant. Be bold, be strong, love loud, be triumphant. Ah, be triumphant. Ah, be triumphant.